General Motors was aware of the importance of movies in the 1920s and hired Hollywood filmmakers to come to his Janesville Chevrolet plant and document the men and women who made the cars. But Henry Ford outdid General Motors. He built a film processing studio right in his Detroit plant and sent his photographers out to document America, the automobile, and important people of that era, including himself. President Harding arrives to pay a Sunday visit while they're in the Great Smoky Mountains. Here he is with Harvey Firestone. Ford chops wood for exercise. while Thomas Edison takes a snooze. Firestone offers some friendly advice. The president takes a turn with the ax. Ford, Edison, and the president read the papers. In April 1914, at his Highland Park plant, he organized a motion picture department which through the years produced films that were shown in theaters and schools throughout the country. Travelogues, newsreels, and documentaries that touched on nearly every facet of American life. This is the way the country looks in the years before the First World War. Rich, rolling, but often inaccessible. The man on the farm works as his forefathers have. It's a hard life for man and beast. And a long day for the farmer's wife, too. Many a quiet evening at home, because there's no place to go and no light to read by. A man thinks twice before he goes to market on roads like this. And sometimes he never even gets there. It's a long walk to school on a muddy road. More fun to go by sleigh in the winter. During recess, there's time for a snowball fight. Of a climb up the old elm tree, if you've got the spunk for daring deeds like this. The one sure way to get someplace is on a train. Life in the city moves at a slow pace. This is Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington. No trip to the Capitol is complete without a tour of the White House. President Wilson lives here now. The East Room with its chandeliers and shiny floors. There's more hustle and bustle down at the market, Faneuil Hall in Boston, or in New York City on the Lower East Side. Always plenty to do and see in the big town. Ride the elevated train all the way from the Battery far uptown.
There's the Hippodrome, one of the big theaters in New York. Another way to see the city is a boat ride around Manhattan Island. All aboard. Watch out. Some city slicker may try to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. We're passing the Battery with its famous aquarium. There's a Navy cruiser at anchor. Great ocean liners along the Hudson River. Mighty tall buildings in New York City. The Flatiron Building, shaped like a triangle. And the Woolworth Building, 60 stories high, tallest in the world. Look at that traffic on Fifth Avenue. The age of the automobile changes nearly every aspect of American life. The tempo quickens in city and country. No longer a luxury, almost everyone can afford to own a car. And sometimes it seems that we're all on the road at the same time. We're a nation on wheels, and soon to take to the air as a slim young man in a silver plane opens up new horizons. Here he is, Charles A. Lindbergh landing at the Ford Airport. Another pioneer gives us the courage to try something new. In no time at all, there are scheduled flights to anywhere you want to go. The dimensions of time and space are further diminished. A new age begins, and we move forward with it. Yet as we go, we preserve the past to mirror the accomplishments of those who have shown us the way to the future. 